Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Just do want you to know though if you put up with what I'm going to say tonight and you go home and you start to say okay God I want that there's going to be a good payoff at the end. So I am a very focused, a very determined person. And it's kind of a requirement for what I'm doing. But it also presents a constant challenge. <laughs> Because I'm always getting interrupted. <laughs> And I just want to think. <laughs> When I've got a plan or a goal, and anyone or anything interrupts it or appears to be throwing it off course, I have to really <laughs> try <laughs> with a lot of prayer to be patient. And <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a funny story. I was on my way to do a church service. <laughs> And if there's anything I can't stand, it's to be late for my own stuff. I mean, when it starts, I want to be right over there paying attention to what's going on because I'm misresponsible. It's my deal. I want to make sure that it all goes right. And we got lots of good people, but I still want to be there. And, uh, oh, you, you should see if I get stuck in a traffic jam. It is like... <laughs> Now, you know, I've, I have some self-control, but it's like, it's a challenge. How many of you know what I'm talking about? There's certain situations that are just more challenging for you than others. Well, see, those are the ones we want to attack with God. <laughs> And because uh, you take ground one step at a time, okay? I re I'm really pretty patient with God now. I'm not, I mean, because I've kind of figured out I'm not going to make him hurry. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm okay with that. You know, if he gives me what I want in a week, that's fine. If he gives it to me in 25 years, that has to be fine because you're not going to make God hurry. So, I've just... I kind of chilled out with that one. But I still kind of try to control other stuff sometimes. So we're on our way to this church service. We got to pass these train tracks. Well, the train thingy board thing is down and the lights are flashing and no train, no train, no train, no train, no train, no train, no train. And the traffic's backing up, backing up, backing up. Now people start turning around, going the other direction, turning. So obviously something was wrong and the thing was down and there was no train. So we finally did a U-turn, and so now we're going to have to take this detour and go through all these streets we're not even sure about, and I'm like, I'm going to be late. <laughs> I don't want to be late. And so Dave is very generous in his driving in that he usually lets a lot of people in. So we're driving, I'm like wanting to get there, and I see this car inching out of this side street, and Dave started slowing down. <laughs> and out of my mouth comes, Dave, this is no time to be nice. <laughs> He said, no, we don't want to be nice, we're on our way to church. <laughs> That would not be a good thing to be nice on your way to church. <laughs> and it was so funny <laughs> so funny so I want I want to be who I am I love my personality I love what I'm doing I love my aggressive nature so that means that I'm gonna just keep working with God and see the good news is, is I know he loves me anyway I'm not going to go to heaven because I'm patient, but I want to be fully patient because here comes the payoff. Are you ready for this? You, yeah, you're ready. You want this, don't you? Oh, my gosh. James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it wholly joyful, my brethren, <laughs> whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Now, you know, really, that's a great scripture, but nobody really does that. <laughs> I mean, it's like, 
Did you notice how quiet you were when I started reading that? Nobody cheered. <laughs> Nobody clapped for this. Consider it joyful when you're in all kinds of tests and temptations and trials. Well, you can't be joyful about the trial, but what we're supposed to be able to do is to look by faith beyond what we're going through to what it's going to do for us spiritually. Because see, you have to have the hard times to learn to control the soul. Good, 12 people are happy. All right. So, be assured and understand that the trial and the proving of your faith bring out endurance and steadfastness and patience. Well, how many of you, when you have trials, it brings out patience? Uh, you know what happened to me? It brought a whole bunch of other stuff out. Man, it brought stuff out of me. I mean, 30 and 40 years ago, whoo, I mean, it would bring stuff out of me that I didn't even know was in there. And finally, we started getting around to a little more patience. And let me tell you, I am very patient in many, I'm patient when people make mistakes. I'm, I mean, I used to get almost get hives over slow clerks. I mean, I can do a slow clerk now and stay happy. Don't you love it when you're in a grocery store line and they run out of tape and they run out of change and it's a new clerk and she doesn't know how to work the cash register and you are in a hurry. And you have your cross around your neck and you're supposed to make her feel good and you are like. <laughs> That's our witness. Okay. So I, I got the slow clerk. God gave me slow clerks. I mean, I, I would pray about which line to get in at the grocery store and I would still get in the one that was gonna have trouble. So I've been there, done that, I can do a slow clerk. I can wait on, I mean, there, I've grown. There's stuff I can do. But there's still stuff that I want to learn to do. How many of you are where I'm at? You can feel me tonight. Okay. We're going to get to the payoff. But let endurance and steadfastness, verse 4, but let endurance and steadfastness and patience have full play and do a thorough work here comes the payoff, so that you may be people perfectly and fully developed with no defects, lacking in nothing. Whoa! Oh my gosh. If we keep this up and we ever get to being fully patient, he says, look, you are going to lack nothing. Another translation says, wanting nothing. You know, the things that make us miserable are all the things that we want that we don't have. And so he says, you'll be so patient that, yeah, I mean, it, it does, it's not even a, not you're going to ask God for nothing, but you can ask God for things, and you, you're so full of trust that you know he'll give it to you at the right time, so you can enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay. Now, somebody with my personality... <laughs> Somebody with my personality feels impatient when someone or something is hindering their progress. But someone with my personality also has usually a fair amount of discipline and self-control. So it kind of seems like with every deficit, you get a plus. And with every plus, you also get a little deficit. What does the Bible say? We've all got strengths and we've all got weaknesses. Now. I may feel impatient, but here's the thing that I've learned. If you don't get this, you're going to miss the whole thing I want to bring to you tonight. Feeling impatient is not a sin. It's being impatient. Come on. Actually, God's proud of us when we feel impatient and we use self-control because we love him, in other words, because we love him, because we love him, because we love him, we want to represent him well so we no longer have the luxury of doing what we feel like doing all the time. 
And see, we have to learn that just because I feel something doesn't mean I have to do it. Hey, we got three meetings to go if you're here all weekend. And yes, I have a book for this too. It's called Living Beyond Your Feelings. <laughs> We have to learn to own our feelings and not let them own us. So, and, and I think it's good to know just because you feel angry, feeling angry is not a sin. It's staying angry and acting on that anger that becomes the sin. The Bible says, when you're angry, not if you get angry, when you're angry, do not let the sun go down on your anger. In other words, when you feel angry, work through it with God and get the thing over with so you can go to bed in peace. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. People groan when they hear the word discipline and self-control. I'm going to teach tonight on discipline. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, discipline is not your enemy. Discipline is your friend. Because discipline is given to us by God to help us be what we want to do, be, do what we say we want to do, and have what we say we want to have, but never will have unless we operate in self-control. There's a whole list of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, humility, and self-control. You know what I think? Self-control is at the end because it holds all the others in place. How can I walk in love if I have no self-control? Because I'm going to run into days when I just flat out don't feel like loving. And I'm going to run into some people that aren't really very lovable. And how can I always be kind? And how can I always be humble? Self-control. 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 Don't ever say, I just don't have any self-control. If I eat one cookie, I have to eat the whole bag. <laughs> well, I mean, really, if you get right down to it, now that's just a little bit dumb. I mean, you are born again, full of the Holy Ghost. You have authority over the devil, and you can't take authority over a cookie? Well, if I eat one potato chip, I got to eat the whole bag. <laughs> okay, look, I'm going to tell you something. Mama wants to tell you something. You can do all things through Christ, who is your strength. And one of the first things that we have to do is stop saying, it's too hard. I can't, it's too hard. <laughs> Woo, we're having fun tonight. At least I'm having fun, I don't know. Now, you have to develop <laughs> the fruit of the Spirit. We, we develop abilities, and things are developed through exercise. <laughs> so that's why when we pray for patience, God's got to give us a reason to have to be patient, because we can never develop greater patience if we don't have to use it. <laughs> Did you get all that? Do I need to rewind? Rewind, okay. Okay. When I pray for patience, I'm going to get an opportunity to have to be patient. If you pray to love everybody, you are going to get some unlovable people. You know, we pray all these spiritual prayers and we feel so holy about ourselves. Oh Lord, I just want to do your will and live a sacrificial life and just, you know, I surrender everything to you, God, and I want to be patient, and I want to love everybody. <laughs> That's on Sunday. And Monday morning, you're like, what is going on in my life? It didn't even do me any good to go to church. 
Yeah, you're getting just exactly what you prayed for because you can't get what you prayed for until you start using the little bit that you've got. How many of you know you all have muscles? Some of you can't find them. <laughs> but you got them. You may have heard this story, but it's funny. I started working out 12 years ago with a trainer, and Dave said, oh, you're not gonna do that. You always say you're going to, and you never follow through. Well, that was just what I needed. Because that kind of stuff just, I mean, it was the perfect thing for him to say to me, because I just got that thing in me, don't tell me I can't. And so, I went, been working out ever since. Well, after I, after I was working out about three months, I'm sitting in a boat one day. Somebody was taking us for a boat ride. I had my feet kind of propped up, and I went to rub the back of my leg, and I felt a knot. And I thought, oh my gosh, I must have a tumor. <laughs> I did, I thought I had a tumor. It was this little bump back there, and I thought, oh my goodness, I felt over here, and I had another one on this leg. <laughs> it was muscles. I could never feel them before. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? That is the absolute truth. That's not a preacher story, that's the truth. <laughs> well, hey, you should see what's in here now, man. It's like <laughs> amazing. Okay, but now let me tell you, when I started exercising <laughs> to develop my muscles that I had, but nobody could see. See, you have patience, but maybe nobody can see it. Are you getting this? <laughs> you have it, it's just that it's not showing up anywhere because it's still weak and wimpy. <laughs> I, I can't do that. <laughs> it's too hard. Now, I am telling you the absolute truth. When I first started exercising, I been, I mean, because I wasn't just doing like fluff stuff. I mean, I had a trainer and it was, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I was sore for two years. <laughs> I mean, I was sore somewhere for two years. I mean, it got to be like my friend. Because I got to the point where I, I, I'm like, man, my body's changing. You know, I actually kind of missed it when I got to the point where I wasn't sore all the time. I kind of thought, well, this isn't doing me any good anymore. <laughs> and when I first started, I mean, I had this thing happen that was funny, but just ridiculous. I thought I was gonna work out at home. I'm gonna get this program, and they're gonna, they had this thing where you could go to the gym, and they would teach you for a week, then you could go home, work out on your own for three weeks. So we got some equipment, we're gonna work out at home. So they gave us what was actually two workouts, and we were supposed to trade them off. I say we, because Dave decided to go with me, although he'd been working out 55 years. So you're supposed to trade them off. Well, they didn't make that clear, so I did all of it. Never had worked out. I did all of that every day. Well, I, I mean, I had to fall on the toilet and pray to get off. I mean, it was bad, bad. It was, a, it was terrible. So what I, and it was taking me an hour and a half. And I, I went back to the trainer. I said, well, I, will I ever get any quicker at this? And he said, well, it should only take you 45 minutes. I said, it's taking me an hour and a half. He said, well, what all are you doing? I said, well, all this stuff. He said, you're doing it all. So I became the joke of the gym, you know, it's like. Anyway, enough of that. Second Peter chapter one. <laughs> I'm having too much fun here. I don't know. This is just, this is just really good. Okay, now these scriptures are so, so amazing. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, For his divine power has bestowed upon us all things that are requisite to life and godliness. 
So God, by his grace and mercy, has given us everything that we need to live an amazing life. Verse 4, by means of these promises, he has bestowed on his, he has bestowed on us his precious and exceedingly great promises so that through them you might escape by flight from the destruction, the rottenness, and the decay that's in the world. So he said, okay, by grace I'm giving you these promises so you can have a great life. If you can enact these promises in your life, through them you will escape from all the junk, nonsense, craziness that's going on in the world. For this reason, here you go, add your diligence to the divine promises. Employ every effort in what? In what? Come on, you need to look at these scriptures. In what? Your faith to what? <laughs> exercising to develop. He said, you make every effort in exercising your faith to develop virtue, excellence, resolution, Christian energy, and in exercising virtue, you will develop knowledge and in exercising knowledge you will develop self-control and in exercising self-control you will develop steadfastness which is patience and endurance and in exercising steadfastness you will develop godliness and in exercising godliness you will develop brotherly affection and in exercising brotherly affection you will finally come to the point of walking in Christian love. Awesome is that? Let's go all the way back to the beginning. You are a spirit. <laughs> Every good thing you need is in your spirit. But it comes in seed form. The Bible says in 1 John that the divine seed of God has been planted in us. Wow. So, actually, the Amplified Bible says the divine sperm of Almighty God has been planted in us. So, and, I, and I'm not out of line when I say this, for all intent and purposes when we're born again, we become pregnant with godliness. <laughs> okay? But just like a pregnant woman doesn't show it first. She's telling everybody she's pregnant. Well, you don't look pregnant. Well, you can tell everybody, well, I got saved last week. Well, you don't act any different. <laughs> come on, come on. Telling parables here like Jesus did, okay? I mean, I love to do this sometimes and bring about eight pregnant women up on the platform and have them stand sideways when they're all at different stages of pregnancy. And see, that, that's the way we are. We're like, at first nobody can see anything, and then, you know, you get bigger, 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 bigger. And then pretty soon you're like, if I don't have this baby pretty soon, I'm gonna just. And yeah, that's where a lot of you are. <coughs> you're ready to give birth to something amazing. Come on, are you with me? And the birth coach is the Holy Spirit. And you know what the birth coach says? Push! <laughs> Breathe! Push! <laughs> it's a journey, folks. Exercise, develop. <laughs> Some of you are out there going... Say, man, I thought this was a miracle service. <laughs> In the worship, we sang all those great songs about miracles. Can I tell you something? The changing of a human being is the greatest miracle that you will ever witness in your whole life. Well, you can live by faith and do things with God's help that you never, ever thought that you'd be able to do. God will prove himself strong in your life.
un unfortunately, in a lot of our communities around here in South Africa and this region in KwaZulu Natal, um, the abuse, the sexual abuse, uh, the physical abuse of as well, uh, is quite horrendous. And we have such great opportunities through our classrooms of hope to help little guys like this who are going to make a big impact on the world one day. With your missions gift right now, you can provide safe classroom learning opportunities for young children. You know, the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. Well, we're all getting older every day, but you know what? Age is just a number. Getting old is a mindset. I wish that someone would have told me when I was 20 or 30 the things that I'm trying to tell you in this book. I share with you some things that I've gone through personally and the things that I believe I could have done that would have helped me to avoid some of those more painful things. Let me help you age without getting old. Besluit om bewust te genieten van je leeftijd en ontdek wat je vandaag kunt doen om je morgen jong te voelen. Bestel dit boek. Door te bellen met 026 20 22 100 of online via joyce-meyer.nl shop. Een dag begint pas goed met een goed ontbijt. En een dagelijkse overdenking van Joyce. Nieuwe impulsen en bemoedigende gedachten die je zullen sterken tijdens je dag. Abonneer je gratis op de overdenkingen op joyce-meijer.nl slash overdenking of op Facebook. Begin je dag goed. Het is het waard.